Coding Kid here. Vanta.js is a library for animating website backgrounds. Currently, it has 13 animations to choose from. This video is mainly about Vanta, but we'll also use React, the most popular JavaScript library for building UIs. To set up React, we can use the VTBuild tool. In order to start coding in a matter of seconds, make sure you have Node.js installed. Link in the description. And we'll throw in some Google fonts. Let's get started. I'm going to create a new Vite project by running npm create Vite. I'll call the project React and Van Vanta.js. The package name will also be React and Vanta.js. Framework is React, and I'm going to use JavaScript and Speedy Web Compiler, which is SWC. You can use pure JavaScript if you want. Okay, then I'll type code. React and Vanta.js to open up a new VS Code window in that folder. Cool. Okay, so I'll open up the terminal by pressing Control and single quotes and type npm run. Oh, first we need to install everything. So npm install. This will install all the packages and generate a node modules folder. Uh, cool. Then we can type npm run dev to start the dev server and control click this link to open it up in your browser. Nice. Okay, I split the windows and now I'm going to delete the assets folder and delete the reference to the React logo in the app function as well as delete all of this content and delete index.css. I know it's a lot of deleting and also to delete all the content of app.css okay i think we're done with deleting oh no there's more delete line 5 and this import uh and if we refresh oh yeah well we also need to delete this reference to index.css okay that's all the deleting for sure okay now I'm going to make this lowercase because that's the convention for CSS and I'll also close this explorer up. I'll press F12 to open up the console and I think we can start coding now. Okay, I'm going to create a new div with the class name of background and let's give it an ID of Vanta. And now let's... oh wait, yeah. Now we actually need to install Vanta.js. So, if you press Ctrl C in the terminal, it will close the dev server and run npm install. Let me just make that a bit bigger. npm install Vanta to install Vanta.js. Once that's done, you can run npm run dev again, and the the browser window should automatically refresh. Now that Vanta.js is installed, we can import it. So let's import the clouds effect from Vanta slash src slash clouds, Vanta.clouds. You can use whatever Vanta.js effect you want. There's a list of all the effects in the Vanta.js website, and that's Vanta.js.com. I'll put a link to this website in the description below. I'm using the clouds effect. Cool. So now, that we've imported the clouds effect, which is actually just a function, we can call it. So let's call clouds and pass in the element we want to animate. But we can't actually do this. We have to wrap this in a use effect hook. So we'll use, call use effect and pass in a function. I'm going to pass in an arrow function. You can pass in a normal function if you want. And there. The reason we need to wrap this in a use effect is because we want this code to run after the component is rendered and use effect will do just that but we only want this uh, function to be called once so we will pass in an empty parameter as the second sorry an empty array as the second parameter now let's also tell vanta what element we want to animate this is going to be the div with the id of vanta now, this is giving us an error because Anta.js wants us to use the 3JS CDN. And 
That's a bit weird because usually npm packages come with all their libraries pre-installed, but not Vanta.js. So let's search for 3.js CDN and click the first link. I'll also put a link to this website in the description below and I'll copy the script tag for the minified version. I'll put the script tag just before the title in my index.html and while we're at it we can also rename this to vanta.js with react. Okay and there's our clouds effect it's just not full screen and I want it to be a bit faster so we can set the speed to 5. There are a lot of parameters you can customize. Oh okay 5 is too much. Phew. Uh, there are a lot of parameters you can customize and if you go to the Vanta.js website you can see all these parameters and change them and then let's say you wanted to change the separation you could copy this code and paste it into here but I'm using the clouds effect so for the clouds effect you would cl click clouds cool uh, nice I'm going to put the windows back and I don't really like this because it's not full screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset CSS, so margin zero, padding zero, padding zero. And I'm going to select the background and make the width 100 viewport width and the height 100 viewport height. This might not update, you might have to refresh and then Vanta.js will update. Cool. Um, I think that's it for the Vanta.js part. Now we can start coding, working on the hero section. So I'm going to open up the stove and create a new element with the ID of hero and add a heading here. So the heading can say, uh, what can the heading say? Let's see. Cool clouds. I couldn't think of anything cooler. You can make it say whatever you want. And in app.css, We'll select the hero section and give it a display of flex. We'll align the items to the center. Oh wait, before that's not working because we want the height to be 100% of its parent and the width to also be 100% of its parent. Okay, now align items center work. We'll also justify the content to center, uh, to center everything vertically. Cool, I'm going to make the heading a bit bigger, so .h1 font size 5em, oh, not .h1, it's h1, and .hero h1, and this worked, but it's not responsive, so if you made this, let's say, a mobile, it wouldn't really update. What we want to do is make this a clamp function, the minimum value will be 40 pixels, we'll make the target value 7 viewport height and the max value 140 pixels. Okay, so now if we make the window full screen, everything should be big and we can resize this window just like that. Nice. Okay, so uh, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to change the font. Uh, because I like fonts, and I'm just going to use a Google font. So if you type in Google fonts into Google, uh, you can click Google fonts, browse, browse fonts, and wait, let me remove my families. Let's make this full screen. I'm going to use the Poppins font, but you can use whatever font you want. Just make sure to select the regular version and the bold version, because we're going to use the bold version in our heading. And then you can click this button in the top right to view selected families and then select the import version and copy that and paste it right into your CSS file. Now we should be able to use the Poppins font. So we'll set the font family to Poppins. And as a fallback, we'll use a sans serif font. Maybe even bigger. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, I'm also going to have a paragraph here. So, lorem, this generates a bunch of lorem ipsum text. And I'm going to set the flex direction to column. And select the paragraph. And 
first let's change the width to 70 viewport width and maybe 75 and make the font size 1.5 em maybe 1.4 1.3 actually okay and now this is responsive i think that's it for this video if it's still here don't forget to like and subscribe see you next time